I'm Coach Alyssa Andrino, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking it, and you up next. Keep the boys go hard. Rock the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break the sway. Don't set up for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and are your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. T Nation, what it do, fam? Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, it is season four, the year of the Mamba. And KT and I, we are working hard, ladies and gentlemen. We are going from coast to coast, back and forth, and we are finding rising superstars, amazing, talented coaches who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, rain down on me, man. We getting blessed today. We got one of the dopest coaches out there who is a rising superstar and standing at 6'2", to be honest with you. I'm a little bit afraid of it. Y'all make some noise for the Sultan of Stafford, Virginia, the, the Letterman, the alumni of Tennessee, and now she is in her sixth year coaching, representing the Cal Berkeley Bass. Y'all make some noise. Boys for Alyssa Andrino. <laughs> Coach Andrino, how you doing today? I am pumped to be here. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. I've hey. watched a bunch of episodes and you guys are awesome. So I'm super excited. Oh, don't do that, Coach. Don't do that, Coach. Don't gas us up like that. And before we go any further, Kevin, you know what that means? Let's sound the door because we got an a, a, a nomination video in here today. It's a quick turnaround. Shout out to Coach Jim Malcolm, who was recently on our show. It aired in February. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the Cal coaching staff, y'all can go watch our video as it as, as well but welcome to the show allow me to reintroduce myself i am your host the mouth of the south b jones the og all things louisiana we'll put your l's up mr Yee is in the building and i'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother the other side of the logo the quiet storm Shh. all facts no cap the head coach kt Kev, man, it feel good to be back in California. It does, B. Jones, but I think we have just set the record for as many volunteers that we've had on the show, B. Jones. But why you say that? What what that mean? Tennessee? How oh, many times have we been in Tennessee? This is at least, at least be twelve. Yeah, on Rocky Top. Yeah, hey, Kevin, we 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 need to reach out to the chancellor. We got to be honorary. Tennessee Vols on this thing, at least, man. <laughs> I mean, I know, but you know, our allegiance is somewhere else in the uh, SEC. Uh, Jones, so you know, that's semantics. That's semantics. Let's get this party. Let's go. Let's get this party cranking. Let's get it started. The first motion of business is the moment of truth. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is our version of two truths and a lie. So we're about to kick off an icebreaker where Coach Adrino has already picked out three particular unique facts about herself. But as you can tell in the title of the, of the, of the game, one of these facts ain't true. Kevin and I will have exactly 60 seconds to work together as a team and deliberate and use the process of elimination to see if we can uncover which one of these facts about Coach Andrino is not the truth. All right, Coach, go easy on us. We on about a four or five game losing streak, so I'm a little bit emotionally tender right now. I'm fragile, <laughs> so so go <laughs> easy on us, Coach. Give us your three facts. All right, here they go. The first one is I wear a women's size 12 shoe. Number two is I've been to 13 countries. And number three is I have an extra tooth. That extra two thing is a monster. God, well, B. Jones, I did all my research, man. <laughs> and yeah, she just did it. Look at you know, do you know when she started playing volleyball, B? 
<laughs> oh, oh, we're we're getting you. A freshman year in high school, she played softball and basketball <sighs> before that. I was okay. ready. Well, I'm gonna say this. Evan. That's good stuff. I'm, I'm gonna say this though, KT. She she played overseas. She played professionally, and I know she loved to travel. So I'm I, that eleven. You said eleven countries, right? Thirteen. Thirteen countries is very pa- a, a possible. Thirteen countries is very possible, and I mean she's six two. And she is an absolute monster on the uh, on, on as a middle blocker, bro. I'm talking about she was a dominant force. So it's possible for her to wear a men's size twelve because she that's what women. she said. Oh, women's size, size twelve would be mm-hmm. like a man. I don't even know what that would be in men's. It's like what a thirteen a and a half. Thirteen and a half It'd be a thirteen and a half. Kevin, what you feeling, man? Because the extra two thing, there's no way you know HIPAA won't allow us to look up medical records, so. <laughs> we, try, we, try, we try hard to do research Kevin come on we got 10 seconds left come on Kevin make the call make the call you ain't gonna put this on me I have no earthly idea why would she say extra tooth be Jones she no, ain't no. I, don't, I don't know I don't know I'm gonna come coach smile. smile coach she, she got a beautiful smile KT we ain't gonna I know, do I, I'm just trying to do something <laughs> that Colgate ain't changing man alright <laughs> Kevin, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's 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 go with the middle one. Let's go with the middle. She she been to a lot of countries, but she ain't been to thirteen. All right, is that a final answer there? B, she a little too confident. I think she she too confident. Hey, yeah, I'm, I, just, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Yeah, that's it. We are going with that. Let's one. Let's go because I think you got an extra tooth. So I do have an extra tooth, and I have been to thirteen countries. Oh, God! We went to like a ten. Uh, I wear a women's size 14 shoe, actually. So I have, yeah, so I'm, I'm in a men's like 12 and a half, 13. That's yeah. us. See, that's what happened when you assume, Kevin. We, we, we sit up there and assume that 12 is going to be like, <laughs> they got, they go larger than 12 in the women's, man. Golly, what an epic failure. All right, coach. <laughs> the losing streak continues, but you know what? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's all good. The fun is just getting started. You know what you got to do, coach? We got to get this journey started the right way. We need you to Let's take start. your right hand, reach it up in the, in the air, lift it over your left shoulder, coach. Grab that seat belt and strap. Up, click, clack. It's time to go to work. Let's get this thing kicked off with a call of action. That's right. We need you, everybody that is rocking with us and under the sound of my breath to show us some point and help us to take this show to a whole nother level. I don't know, Kevin. I love the Cow, cow Bears as well, so I think they're going to show us some love. So we need y'all to do the SLT Trinity. Three tremendously big things that won't cost you a penny. Number one, we need you to hit that subscribe button and become a part of the Sports Life Talk family. We are probably about 70 shows in on a year, and we got 110, 120 more coming with amazing guests. So lock in with us. Hit that subscribe button. Number two, hit that like button and tell Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and Bill Gates all of the powers that be that this show needs to bubble all the way up to the top of the algorithm and last but not least sharing is karen we need you to take the hit that little shout button the little arrow right there on your screen and send that to all your people and let them know about this phenomenal young coach who i promise y'all she, she I, can we might see on espn holding a trophy oh, uh, in, in the next decade that's what i'm telling y'all this it's a promising promising star below us coach is Cal going to rock with us? That's all I need to know. Bears are rocking with you. Ba- hey, Bears are rocking with us. I, mm-hmm. hey, I, need to, I need some vibration effects on the screen. <laughs> That's not loud. Cal is going to be. All right, coach. Y'all know what to do, Cal Bears. Y'all smash that subscribe button on the count of three. Let's do it like we true to it. One, two, three. Boo! Yeah! Oh my goodness! That is my favorite part of the show, KT. I can just feel the electricity and the energy coming off the West Coast. But you know what? If you smash that subscribe button, it means that much to us. We consider you family around here. We don't do fans. We don't do followers. We do family. Coach Andrino, double A. Double A batteries. I don't know, Kevin. We might have to come up with a new nickname. Might have to get a uh, Duracell or something to give us an NI- NIL oh. deal or something on this joint. But Coach Double A, what's your favorite emoji right now? What's the emoji of the show today? I think the emoji of the show. I've been going with a little guy saluting a ton. Um, so that's that's my that's been my go to recently. All right, y'all know what to do. If you did any of those three, if you smash that subscribe button, throw the salute down in the chat so KT and I can reach out to you, show you our appreciation. What are we gonna tell them, KT? We're going to tell them thank you. 
Thank you. All right. Y'all waited long enough. It is time to crack open the brains of Coach Alyssa Andrino, the Tennessee volunteer, and let her tell her story her way. Let's learn a little bit about what makes this wonderful coach uh, uh, tick. Welcome to the Sports Life Talks initiation. I can't believe that you said we need uh, vibration effects. We, you better start shaking in your chair. We ain't got that kind of <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, coach, to initiate you into the SLT family. Gotta give us your top five music artists. Okay, this was this is a tough one. Um I will admit here, I'm definitely a country music kind of girl. I love country music. Um I know it's a little, little surprising. I, I I love all genres, but country is kind of my my fave. So recently, um Zach Bryan's been number one, uh Chris Stapleton number two. Uh, Miranda Lambert at number three. I'm gonna throw a little wrench in there. I've been really back into Miguel recently. Um, love, love me some Miguel. And then a classic, uh, Drake at number five. Uh, I, love oh, Drake, I, can't believe <laughs> I know. Morgan Wallen didn't make the list. That's my dog. I love him. I know. I, I know. I, I love Morgan. Um, I, I think he's great and stuff, but he just hasn't been in the rotation recently. You know, he's, he's always up there, but recently he hasn't been. And maybe he, if he drops some new music, he'll he, he did drop some new music, but Kevin. Uh-huh. How, how, how hot is Zach Bryan? I'm going to have to go and listen to this Zach Every single person, come, even the art, they'll throw in Drake, Jay-Z, Zach Bryan. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> that dude is popping like Orville Redenbach. KT, what are you going to give Double A for that amazing list? Well, Coach, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is 10. Okay. But B. Jones. Be careful. You already oh, know. No, what I'm not, no, no, I'm not going to do her dirty beach. You got to worry about that. I ain't talking about that, but you got to make sure you don't go higher than Coach Jen. Coach Jen is watching this. Watch, she watching this right now. So be careful. Tread lightly, sir. Uh, let's give her twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I got to start remembering to write that down. Know, we're gonna start you, right. you always be messy, man. You got to make sure to coach it. <laughs> All right. So who is your favorite superhero and why? Ooh, I think I kind of have two. I go back and forth with um, my two favorite uh, are Captain Marvel and Iron Man. Um, definitely a Marvel, um, Marvel kind of girl. Captain Marvel, I think it's super awesome because she is the strongest superhero in the Marvel Universe. And she's also a female. So um, I think that's, excuse my French, she's pretty badass. Um, I think she's awesome. Um, and she has like all the superpowers that I want. She can fly, super strength, all that stuff. And then I think Iron Man's just cool because Iron Man's really cool. He has an awesome suit and stuff. So, um, but definitely I love Captain Marvel and um, that would, she's my favorite for sure. All right, Coach, we asked that superhero question because we see coaches as superheroes. And you know, a superhero has their own theme music. So give us your theme song. <laughs> My theme song? I think it, it, it definitely shifts a little bit. I love music, so it kind of shifts a little bit. Recently, I'd say my theme song is probably Without Me by Eminem. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I love the course of that song and that was like one of my favorite songs to listen to before I would go out and play uh, It was like one of the last songs I listened to so that's probably that's probably me for right now I'm, You know what I'm an Eminem fan. I can't remember that one. How, how does that one go coach without me? It's a uh, this looks like a job for me. So oh, yeah, yeah you know Follow me. Yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about Hey, that's 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 a jam right there yeah, I thought, you, I thought you were just trying to trick her to get her to do the song. I, 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 I like, was, but then, I, I, you know what's funny? I was trying to trick her, but I thought it was a different song, honestly. So I'm glad, <laughs> she, <laughs> I'm glad she sung it. <laughs> All right, Coach, so we have a running debate on this show where I want to mm -hmm. be a singer and B. Jones wants to be the dancer. So we need for you okay. to break the tie for your episode. <sighs> Would you rather be a singer or a dancer? Mm. I'm probably going to have to go singer, honestly. I'm probably going to have to go singer. <laughs> <clears throat> I think. <laughs> Am I out now? Am I gone? I know. Okay, I'm yeah, I know. Out. That's your second one. That's your second one. Go. I know. <laughs> I think I would go singer just because I don't honestly don't really know why. Dancing is fun and stuff, but I just think it would be so cool just to be able to just like start singing and you just sound good. Like, because you guys just heard what I sounded like. I'm not. I'm not a great singer, but um, I I think singing is where I'd go. All right. So, what is something that volleyball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Ooh, good one. 
Um, I think probably the biggest thing that I've learned is to not be afraid of failure. Um, that is like just in all aspects of my life and stuff and stuff that I like off of the court is like, I'm really not scared of cha like being challenged and, have, and having challenges in my life and just not being afraid to like fail at them or mess up. And it's like, if you mess up, it's, it is what it is. And we're just going to move on. You're going to figure out a way to go anyways. So that's probably the biggest lesson. So I like to try to teach some of, some of our kids too. All right, so let's go back to your senior year. Yes. Now, let's say that you um, committed to Coach Jen Malcolm. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself being able to play for her? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Um, that's actually, it's funny because that's one of the, the reasons why I definitely was wanting to work for her and stuff is because I never got the chance to play for her. Um, and it's funny just because I know that, you know, we, I'm sure she told you guys kind of our, our history, but my head coach, she recruited me. I, I said no to her first school. Then she was at uh, Tennessee, actually. And then she ended up leaving before I got there. So it was like two different schools and stuff. But I absolutely would be able to play for her. She is the epitome of just like confidence um, and just like knowledge and all these different things that you love seeing in strong females. And I would have loved to play for her, but I'm lucky at least to get to, to work with her. Um, but yeah, I, I would have loved to play for her. All right. So B and I, we're going to produce a movie that's centered around you. The one thing that we're missing is a lead actress. Who should we get to play you in the story of your life? Hmm. I think I would go with maybe like a, a young Maya Rudolph. Uh, we have really similar, like, like just senses of humor and like comedic personalities and stuff. And like, um, so I think I would probably go with Maya Rudolph. I think she's, she's awesome. Uh, you know what? I was going to say the small let girl, but I, li I like that one. I like that one. It, either. I was thinking either. Uh, who was that? How do I breathe? with no. Uh, who was that? Yeah. Jordan, uh, Jordan Sparks. Jordan Sparks. Yeah, I was thinking either Jordan Sparks or, or, or Journey Smollett, but I, I like Kamaya oh. Rudolph. We're we going to have to yeah. make this a little bit of a comedic type of uh, type of deal with your movie. We're a lot of laughs, <laughs> I think in the probably. Joint. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we come out there to check y'all out, What's going to be that one food spot you're going to recommend and what's your go-to meal there? Um, mezzo. Mezzo. It is the, the classic. It is a staple of Berkeley. It's a staple of Cal. Everybody goes to Mezzo. Um, actually, I had Mezzo on my interview and I think my first week here I had it three different times. Um, it's, it's like a, a sandwich soup salad shop and I know it sounds like a little bit basic, but the portion sizes are massive. It'll feed you for two or three meals. And it's so good. So I usually, my go-to recently, um, again, sounds kind of a weird combo, so just stay with me here. But it's uh, this big turkey sandwich, and they add, like, sprouts and all the all the goods on it and stuff. And then uh, a bowl of chili. They have, their chili is phenomenal. So that's kind of what, um, that's my, my favorite spot probably at Berkeley so far. And that's my go-to order. So you guys come out here, we'll take you. Hey, we got to come out there for that, especially the bowl of chili. Look, she, she, you, you get proteined up, don't you, Coach? Mm -hmm. Have to, have to. I'm going to let y'all have that chili, B. Jones. I'm not fun to be around out of eating chili. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> All right, so now it's time for the You Got Next offering. We're passing our collection plates around and asking you to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Leave us your top five music artists, your theme song, and your favorite superhero in the comments. And finally, go to our website. SLTYouGotNext.com to learn more about us and other You Got Next family members like Coach Malcolm. Now allow me to turn over to B as we learn more about our newest play cousin, Coach Alyssa Andrano. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Coach Double A, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. I feel I feel like we're growing out there in California, and uh, I couldn't have picked a better school. And I'm sorry, I know there's a lot of great schools out there, but Cal, y'all got something cooking that is a, a, a massively special, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. But let's tell them your story, Coach. Let's take this thing back to the beginning. Sound like Kevin? Kevin already know the origin story. How you? Yeah, yeah he knows it all. Okay. I was like, she ain't gonna beat us today, and then she went with an extra two. I mean, I'm supposed to get that. <laughs> so let's take it back to the beginning, Coach. When did you fall in love with the game of volleyball? Yeah, so it was a pretty crazy story. Like, actually, just kind of how I got introduced to volleyball. Um, I grew up. I was a softball and basketball player, so I started playing softball like little t-ball when I was five, you know, my mom was a softball player. My uncle played baseball, so that was kind of like our our whole family sport. And so lifetime played softball, played basketball all through like middle school, my freshman year high school. And my mom played volleyball in high school and she was like, listen, I think you should try it. She was like, 
just go try it. And I was like, no, I don't want to. Um, and my mom, like, she's just like, I, I really think you're going to like it. You know, mothers know best, obviously. Um, and so she was like, listen, there's this two day camp at the high school. I want you to go. If you don't like it, you never have to touch a volleyball again. And I was like, Ugh. and you know, I was like 15. I was like bratty still. And I was like, you know what? No, I, I was like, oh, fine, I'll go. I, I know I'm not going to like it. Lo and behold, uh, here we are, what, 11 years later, and now I'm, I, I'm a coach. But I, I can't tell you exactly what it was that made me fall in love with the sport. I just, I think it was the, the team aspect. I love the explosiveness of it. I love the fact that, like, you, I kind of love, like, the break-in points. Like, each point is, like, its own mini game. Um, I, I, I just love the camaraderie. Like, I could go on and on about the sport. I, I love volleyball. But... Um, it was just really funny because I was pretty adamantly against trying it. My mom was like, you know what? You need to try it. And I was like, oh, fine. I just did it to basically please her. And then here we are. So my mom knows best. Uh, I hope she's going to hold this over my head forever. So, <laughs> you, you know, I, I look at I look at volleyball and uh, it's funny because it, it takes a certain mental fortitude in order to play volleyball. There, there's a couple of things in sports. Like I can imagine being a high diver or a gymnast, being out there on the floor by yourself, having to have a perfect performance. What about like, like a pitcher, a softball pitcher standing on the mound by yourself. But it's nothing like a team going on a run and mm -hmm. you got to buckle down and work together as a team and stop that run and overcome it. You that that volleyball is a whole different <laughs> type of beast. So so for you to pick this up at the age of 15 years old, is is, is that kind of considered a, a little bit latter for, for somebody who actually goes pretty far in their career like you did? I was violently late in the in the career to start playing. <laughs> <It's aggressive>. like, <laughs> yeah, I was un and so I I didn't actually even play club volleyball until my 16s year. Um, and 16s is known in volleyball. That's like your recruiting year. That's like the year when kind of all the recruiting happens. That's when like kind of that's when everything happens. And so I that was my first experience with high level volleyball at all. And so I was kind of thrown into the fire, and all of a sudden I was just like. I barely even, you know, know how to block yet. And I was like, all of a sudden I'm playing, you know, in these massive tournaments at these huge qualifiers. And so my learning curve was super, super fast. Um, definitely had to learn, you know, with, with my hair on fire, basically trying to figure it out. But I was very, very late for just kind of like my, just volleyball in general and sports in general, picking up a new sport, especially this day and age at 15, 16 is pretty uncommon. Um, so that was, it was a learning curve for sure. For coach. You didn't just get any type of Division One offer. I mean, you got a Power Five offer in SEC, and I know people probably like, "What well, SEC probably don't have great volleyball." I don't care. SEC does everything great. We spend money on everything in the SEC. So to uh -huh. get that type of, of offer, you had to be different, Coach. I mean, what was up? Did did, did you just did it just catch naturally, and you just was a natural? How, how in one year did you earn an offer to go to Tennessee? <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> I'll say the Lord. Um, I think for, for me, it was, I definitely was blessed with just, you know, obviously the physical aspect. Like I'm pretty tall, you know, it was pretty athletic, yeah. some of those kinds of things. Um, but I think the thing that actually helped me out was people knew that I hadn't been playing for a long time. And so they're like, I had absolutely uh. no idea. I had no idea what volleyball was really. Like I was out there, I was doing stuff. I, I thought I knew what I was doing, had no clue. So I think it was for me, and like my specific situation, it was more of the potential that was in me at that point in time. And then just kind of like some of my intangibles and stuff, like anybody who's kind of ever, you know, around the year, like watching play, I'm pretty competitive. Um, I'm pretty competitive and I can, you know, I can be pretty gnarly out there. And so I think just some of like my intangibles combined with just like all the potential that I had at that yeah. age without, because people knew I didn't know what I was doing, I think is probably why, um, why I ended up, you know, being able to, to go to somewhere of that of that caliber but yeah so so you play professionally you've been to 13 different countries as you <laughs> as you almost tricked tricked us up at the beginning <laughs> of the show so i know at, i know at some point you had to sit down and be like i can't i can't believe i'm over here eating this 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 cuisine like all because of this this one ball right this this small volleyball mm -hmm. have you sat down and told you have you ever sat down and told your mama like thank you for for pushing that 15 <laughs> Be out there on that court i have but probably not enough uh, pro i probably don't say it enough so i i'm gonna i'm gonna call her after this i know she's gonna watch this but i'm gonna call her after this and tell her but yeah she she's the one who pushed me in into it and so i'm like i i can't believe i've made it this far at, at this point in time so it's it's pretty cool yeah 
so so I saw the post where your retirement post and uh it was it was probably one of the better retirement posts because it had little emotions in it but at the same point in time you let the world know at that point in time like hey my, my, my volleyball journey ain't over was that was that your your decision and your your announcement that you were stepping into the coaching arena at that time it was yeah and so the the fun thing about that was at that point in time uh it hadn't been announced yet where i was going because i was going to go coach um but it hadn't been announced yet so i couldn't post it publicly and so that was kind of my like hey i'm done playing but you luckily for luck unluckily for volleyball excuse me uh they can't get rid of me yet so i'm still around so that was kind of my <laughs> yeah my, hey, you know i'm not going to be you know on the court anymore but i'm i might still be on the sidelines <laughs> you, you 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 let them know you was gonna be on the sidelines so i gotta ask you i i yeah. you know jim malcolm came on this show and i'm gonna tell you something jim malcolm is about that action she hey she a stand on it she is a fiery competitor so are, are you fooling us with this smile right now coach <laughs> are, are, are you a beast like that when, when it when it comes to it all I, I don't know if I don't know if I'm to the level of Jen because like you said she's she stands on business she stands <laughs> on business um but I, I would say I'm pretty close um I I, I kind of explained myself a little bit. Like I kind of have a switch. Like I love laughing and giggling and like having my, my people and I love the relationship piece, but when it's time, when it's time to go, it's time to go. And so, you know, I think some, again, people who know me or gotten to watch me play a little bit kind of, I've probably seen that. Um, but yeah, I, I like to think I I'm, I'm up there, but probably not, probably not as much as Jen. <laughs> I know Jen was probably a major influential piece in it, but what, what attracted you to California? We talking about somebody who is from Virginia, who played at Tennessee. I mean, you, you, you are East Coast gal. What, mm -hmm. what, what, what made you decide to take that leap and, and leave Winthrop and, and go play for uh, Jim Malcolm in California? Yeah, well, I think it was a, it was a coach, bunch of coach for Jim Malcolm. Excuse me, coach for Jim Malcolm. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a, it was quite a few uh, different decisions and stuff. And I think for me, you know, Cal in in the past, especially, has had massive success. You know, they've been to a Final Four. They've done some really cool things on the volleyball side. And so the fact that the infrastructure and like the history and it is here already for the program was something that was really cool for me to be a part of. Um, obviously, Jen was obviously a huge pull, you know, knowing her for so many years and just knowing the kind of person, coach, competitor that she is um, was a, a huge decision for me. And kind of like I mentioned before, you know, challenges and stuff, they don't scare me. And in fact, I tend to like actually look for them. And so for me, I was like, you know, West Coast somewhere I've never lived. I've never been before. Like, this is absolutely a new challenge. Like, let's do it. And it kind of just ended up being like the perfect storm at the right time for me. So now you you on the West Coast, and as soon as you get there, you coach for one year, and it's almost like the the whole world goes upside down. Now we got conference realignment. Are you guys excited? So where 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 did Cal land? What conference are you guys going to be in uh, as the dust settles? We're going to be in the ACC. Yeah. <laughs> so so wait a minute, wait a minute. So now you got to go back to Virginia. You got to yeah. play against. You got to play. Your, you know. You got to coach against your home state. How, mm -hmm. how crazy is that? And and are you guys looking forward to this transfer? Uh, this transition. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was super crazy, and we're we're absolutely looking forward to it. But I think it's funny just because you know the the Carolinas and the Virginia region and stuff is kind of where I grew up, and that's you know kind of again like my home state and stuff. And so I'm super familiar with all those schools, and so now the opportunity to be coaching against them is is crazy to me. It's just like a super full circle moment. Um, and then I, we're super excited for the transition. It definitely obviously comes again with some challenges, as every conference realignment does. But I think we're just super excited because we think that the ACC just like fits the mold and fits our style really well. Um, and so, you know, we're really pumped where our, our players are going to get to see a lot of the East Coast, which is cool for me because a lot of them, some of the places that they're from, have never been to the East Coast or have never gotten to see an East Coast fall. So personally, I'm selfishly, I'm a little bit excited to, to be able to go over there and get yeah, to that's gonna be show some of them and share those experiences with them. I think it's going to be awesome. Now I'm an unintelligent fan. I'm still a fan of the game, but I ain't too I ain't too hip. I ain't too knowledgeable about some of the some of the strategies and stuff. So it's it's I'm I'm one of those people that go into every single coach's box or conversation just assuming it's a Jimmy's and Joe's things, right? I'm just like, hey, you recruit the best, you got a better chance of winning. Kevin, on the other hand, he's a he's a X's and O's. So I'm curious, how big is X's and O's in? But I don't think I got a chance to ask Coach Malcolm this, but how how big is the X's and old side of, of volleyball and and what is your specialty or do you have a specialty you know are you like hey i'm coaching up the middle blockers and i'm creating plays for that or or what kind of kind of walk us through that 
Yeah, so with my, my position group, I obviously was a middle. Um, I played a little bit of opposite, and so I'm like the right side and stuff too. Um, but that's what I coach. So I coach our, our middle blockers, and then I coach our all of our blocking unit in general. And so everybody who's up there jumping, putting their hands over the net and stuff, that's, that's kind of my specialty. Um, and that's, shockingly, that's my favorite part of the game. Blocking is like my absolute favorite part of the game. So I love the fact that I get to, get to coach it and stuff. Um, and when you get into the X's and O's of volleyball, it, it can get really in depth and like statistically. And there's the thing that I think is really interesting. And I love about volleyball is how each skill is so connected. And so I know this might get a little bit much, but it's like our defense really relies a lot heavily on our serving. And so, and that, so maybe people who don't know a ton about volleyball that might not make a ton of sense, but it's like, if we're putting service pressure on the other team, that means it's a lot easier for our defense to be able to read. And so we're looking at, who are we serving? Why are we serving them? What does that mean for our defense? We're looking at block blocking matchups. We're looking at where are the setters setting for, for offensive matchups. So there's a lot of X's and O's that go into it that um, a lot of times, like kind of when you're watching, you're like, oh, they just kind of, you know, maybe they set that person just because. And it's like, you know, sometimes they do, but there's a lot of, of work and the kind of the X's and O's and stuff that goes into it too. So, yeah. We we've been blessed with some uh, with some volleyball love on this show, so I'm unintelligent, but I play a little bit dumb because I want to learn more and more and more. But uh, talk to talk to the young ladies that's watching this right now because you're still pretty young, coach. You still you still at the at the you you at the at you scratching the surface of your coaching career. You had a you had a long playing career, but with that being said, you ain't too far removed from 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 the AAUs and the and the, yeah. and the, and the grind of college. So, what is your advice for the for the seventh and eighth? graders even that even that 15 year old that that's thinking about playing volleyball what what is your advice for them as they take on this daunting task and learn the game and how to how to maneuver through these rigorous aau summers and stuff like that what is your advice to all of those new babies in the volleyball game yeah i have a i have a couple pieces i think my first piece would be just you got to learn, learn to love the grind. And I think the, the coolest part is, is like, for me, volleyball never really felt like work because I was always loving what I was doing whenever I was doing it. And so I think is you just have to always find the joy and whatever, whatever part of the you're doing, whether you're, you know, working out for volleyball or whether you're doing your schoolwork to make sure that you're staying up on time so you can be eligible to play, whatever part you're doing, always find the joy in it because it can be really easy sometimes to see it as a tour and stuff. And it should never be that where it's, it, we're privileged enough to be able and lucky enough to be able to play this sport and to have the opportunities. And so just make sure you're always finding the joy in it. Um, my second piece is more on just the volleyball side. Find, pick a favorite player and watch them, try to emulate them, try to do what they do. And like on the basketball side, like, you know, Everybody wants to be, want to be like Kobe, right? Everybody wants yep. to be like LeBron. And so same thing on the volleyball side, you know, watch volleyball, find your favorite player and try to be like them. And then I think my last piece too is like, I kind of mentioned it before, but just don't be afraid to fail. Failure is going to happen all the time and it's only going to make you better. Um, and so don't be afraid to fail. Do everything you do with confidence, because if you do everything you do with confidence, that things more often than not will generally turn out in your favor. So... <laughs> Well, well you, 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 the confidence in the Kobe, she teed it up perfectly. But <laughs> one of my favorite questions, you know what it is, coach? It is 2024, the year of the mama. KT and I, mm -hmm. we coined it the year of the mama and, uh, to, sh to pay homage and respect to Kobe Bryant and what he's done mm -hmm. to, the, to the world of sports, not just basketball, but what he's done to mm -hmm. the world of sports. He created the mama mentality. So tell us, tell us your mama moment, coach. And I don't care if it was when you was overseas, I don't care if it was at Tennessee, even when you was a coach. Tell us that moment where you gained that confidence. You blacked out and you became a hero, uh, so to speak, and, and, and dominated. Yeah, I think this is the moment that it's one of the, the moments in my career that I, I think about a lot. Um, and so it was my junior year at Tennessee. We had just gotten a brand new coaching staff. Um, so new staff had come in. Um, we had been had not won a ton of games previously before and then my, my first two seasons there. And so. Um, you know, we were just full of life, super excited. Our, you know, my the coaches that I played for are still there. I, I love them. They're super great. So shout out to them. Um, Eve, Gavin, Tyler, love them. Um, and so we were getting ready to play Michigan State, who was ranked uh, on a Friday night. And it was a huge match for us. We were getting ready to break the attendance record. They were a ranked opponent coming in to our house. Like, and so it was, it was a big deal for us. We were ready to kind of show off our new brand of volleyball and new style. Um, and so the game was on Friday. And during our Wednesday night practice, I landed on somebody's foot and blew out my ankle. Um, didn't break it or anything, but just nasty sprain. 
Um, and it was like one of, one of the, one of the worst ankle sprains I've had. Um, and so like, it was to the point, like I, right afterwards, I couldn't walk on it and stuff. And so I was like, are you serious? And at that point in time too, I, I was set to be a starter. So I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is what, you know, what could happen? And, you know, and so I kind of, in my brain, I was like, you know, this isn't looking good for Friday, but I'm just going to do whatever I need to do. So that whole Thursday and that entire Friday before the match, I like basically slept in the, in the AT room. I was in the training room doing all of our rehab recovery, everything that I could do to just make sure that I try, could try my best to try to be ready. But like I said, it was, you guys know how ankle sprains go. Those things yes. take a minute. So Friday comes, you know, in the morning, I'm just kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is, but we had kind of a chat with our coaching staff and basically it was like, you know, do your best to go if you can, but if not, you know, it's fine, but we're not going to start you. Like, we're not going to start you. We're going to let you do your thing. And like, you know, we're going to figure it out as, as the game goes along, but like try to be ready. So I was like, all right. So before I get ready for the game, I've got two rolls of tape on my ankle. Like the thing is like a club foot and I'm just sitting on the bike. I'm ready. I'm just during the whole match. I go through the warmups and stuff and I'm kind of like hobbling around. But at that point, adrenaline's starting to take over, you know, where it's this huge match and stuff. And so I don't play the first two sets. Uh, we ended up winning one set. We lost to the second and then we're not doing super great in the third. And I can kind of feel like the, the energy momentum shift and stuff like that. And so I'm just back there on my bike. And then halfway through the third, uh, our coach is like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, all right, I, I'm on, I'm on half an ankle here. And so we go in and I, I didn't really, honestly, I didn't play that well, but I think it was just more of just like a kind of an energy shift and stuff. So I ended up going in the game. We end up uh, beating uh, Michigan state, which is our first ranked win in like seven years. And then that was the the biggest single school, the biggest turnaround in program history. We ended up going to the second round into the tournament and stuff. And that was just huge for me because I was like, I don't really remember doing too much in that game just because I think I was kind of, like you said, blacked out on adrenaline, but it was just the, the mind over matter for me. Like I knew I couldn't hurt my ankle anymore. The thing was already messed up. Um, but I was like, you know, whatever I can do for my team to get out here and help win, like I'm going to do it. And then I ended up not playing for like the three weeks after that to let my ankle heal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was just like, you know, this is, this is, that game was too important for us. And, you know, for, so I think it was for me, it was just a mind over matter. Like I'm doing whatever I got to do to make sure that, you know, we can win. Um, and so, like I said, I didn't, I wasn't, a, I want to very be very specific. I was not the reason we won that match. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I you think were. Just, yeah, hey. uh, yeah. able to come in and just provide a little bit of maybe like an energy shift or something like that. But that no. was probably. You was the catalyst. You was the catalyst, coach. It's all because of you. That was the that was the the Alyssa win, <laughs> the Andrino game. Coach, last question: How excited are you, uh, Coach Malcolm, the entire Cal team in the world of volleyball? Is on a tear. You guys are growing. We are starting to see more sellouts. You're starting to get headlines. People care. It is becoming mm -hmm. very relevant, and it's one of the fastest growing sports in America. How excited are you and your and your volleyball community? Oh man, I mean, it's funny. Every time we get together with other coaches, we just talk about how exciting it is at this point in time for our sport and how, like you said, the exposure that it's getting. And I think the really cool thing is just for the younger generation, seeing that this is possible for women and women's sports. And even on the women's basketball side and stuff too, like you're seeing women's basketball scene, you know, blow up. And so I think for volleyball, for women, and then for women's sports, I think it is the best thing ever because, you know, I, I, this is really special to me too, because I have a younger sister, I have two younger sisters. Um, and, you know, they're both quite a bit younger than me. And it's super cool because they talk about how they want to play volleyball on TV one day and how they want to be that kind of thing. And when I was, you know, a little bit younger and playing, like that wasn't really necessarily a thought. It just wasn't really right. necessarily relevant yet. So I think it is incredible for just for our sport, for women in general, for women's sports, to be able to see this kind of thing on this kind of, you know, on this platform. I think it's incredible. I'm just, uh, we are, I'm, and I know our staff is just ecstatic about it. It's just so cool. Well, well how old are your sisters? One is uh, 15. She actually turned 16 uh, in two days. So happy early birthday. Happy, happy the younger one is 13. Yeah. Yeah. Almost late 16. And then one is uh, 13. And uh, how tall are they? Um, the 15 year old, almost 16. She's about six foot. And then I don't know, honestly, how tall Autumn is. She's 13. She's probably like five, seven. So they're both going to be pretty tall. My parents are both tall too. So. Ooh, two yeah. two more coming up through the ranks. That's gonna be y'all. Y'all buckle up. Y'all got about two more years before y'all got next. We go. We, we gonna have y'all on the show here pretty soon. All right, coach. 
Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We do a little bit of one-on-one, and you are now officially calling all of the shots. All right, Coach? Uh, this is our version of Would You Rather. So the rules are super simple, ladies and gentlemen. Both Kevin and I, we, 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 we tried it out a little bit with the singing and dancing, so now we're about to take the options to a whole nother level, okay? So we're going to give you a scenario in each round. We'll go three rounds uh, in totality, and whoever you select in each round will get a point. First host to get uh, two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game and kt is the defending champ so uh so kev i will let you get this thing kicked off man let's go who won uh coach uh, malcolm's episode b john oh i think i think i wanted um, i think you want b john's i think oh, i, well, I wanted really gotta put some juice coach yeah i i i, I, oh. I changed up the sneakers on uh, oh my bad i, I, I ruined it <laughs> If you if you watching this, you already know what's gonna happen anyway. But uh, but I ch I changed it up a little bit, KT. So I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, pr I'm pressing my luck on this one. So let's go. Would you rather coach a player that let's say they couldn't get right, they can't catch a break, but you give them a chance, they make it to the volleyball hall of fame, and then their speech tells you they wouldn't have been there without your love and guidance, or or coach. The opening at Tennessee just happened. We need a new head coach. You get to go back to your precious alumni and you get to revitalize this program and take it to the top. Now, this is the deal. To even this thing out, I'm going to give you a 30-year run at head coach in Tennessee. And not only a 30-year run, you're going to be playing for rings, coach. I'm not going to guarantee you a national championship, but that team, that Tennessee team will have a legitimate chance to go all the way in your tenure and you will retire as a Hall of Fame coach representing Tennessee. That's a, that's a tough one. That's a good one, guys. I think... I think I'm gonna have to go with uh, with giving the player a shot. Oh my god! I know. And listen, that was tough because you know, any if you guys know anything about Tennessee alums, you know that we we bleed orange. You know, we we, yeah. love, we love our balls. If you know anything about us, so that one was tough. But I I think you know, giving a, giving a player a shot and having them you know being able to to give a, a kid a chance and for them to move along in their career like that, I think is is super important. Okay. Okay. That was tough, though, guys. That one was a hard one. That's really good. Have fun at Michigan State because the uh, the Tennessee <laughs> ball job just got closed. We went, we went another direction, Coach. We went a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> what the live? We get this. I'm, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right. So round two, I'm gonna give you your own traveling food show. It's gonna be on YouTube and it's gonna stream on the California website where you get to interview other volleyball coaches. Picking their brains, learning more about them while eating at some of the best places in the world, or oh, I got a camera crew ready, coach. We are going to pull up on the campus at, at Cal Berkeley, and we're about to film a documentary. You, Coach Malcolm, the team on the plane, in the locker room, on the court, on the plane rides, everywhere, in the classrooms, and even at your own apartments. We are going to tell the world how this Cal program is built from the inside out and what makes you guys so unique and special. And it's all on Netflix for the world to stream. Ten episodes. This is tough because I am a foodie. I love food and I love travel. You know, obviously I love traveling. But I think I'm gonna have to go with B Jones here. I think I'm gonna have to go with uh, Netflix docu because hey! I will say we get some. Uh, we have some funny stuff going around here. So I think it'd be funny to show some of that off. <laughs> yeah. She had me scared. <laughs> Man, I, I was over here nervous. KT, I was like, she better not. We, we already got our belly full of some mezzos, some chili from mezzos. We don't need to do no more food shows. Right, coach, you already know what time it is for the final round. We stop talking and we let our sneakers do the talking for us. KT and I are huge sneaker heads. We go live every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Part of that live. We talk about everything, but I do a segment called The Drop which I talk about all the new heat that's coming out to the streets that I think people should, should cop. So y'all come hang out with us Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. It's just a fun, fun, uh, a live program. But with that being said, Coach, before the show, KT and I, we picked the past shoes out of our collection. 
that we thought represented you to the fullest. You got one choice, coach. You pick either KT or myself, we'll win this round. So on the count of three, I'm going to get you to say, hold that sneaker, and we're going to pull them out and show you what we got. You ready, coach? Ready. All right. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Oh. Hey, you stole my idea. I hate my bro. I swear. I swear. If I was there, I, I would just, I would hit you right now. I, I, oh. I, I said I'm going back to Tennessee with mine, and he did the same thing. God, you both no. did. <clears throat> oh man, guys, this is really hard. I think. I think I'm going to have to go with KT on this one. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Come get me Elizabeth. Come get me Elizabeth. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and new champion, B. Jones. (laughs) You broke my heart, coach. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (sighs) KT, you was already defending champ, man. You ain't no new champ. Yeah. Oh, I just want Coach hey. Malcolm. Who, who, what other yeah, coaches they, y'all got on staff? <laughs> <laughs> we got Colin Sato. We, we got we got to do a tiebreaker. We got to do a tiebreaker now. Oh, hey, I'm, not, I'm not gonna guy. lie. If I if I'd have lost this episode, I wasn't going out to dinner. I wasn't going to meet them. I wasn't <laughs> doing gonna, nothing. You was gonna pout. You was gonna do a tiebreaker. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna be real upset. All right, double A. Well, you know how we do it. We got to tell them what's up in the future. The title of the show is "You Got Next," and as we talked about your amazing journey from 15 to 13 countries, and now you are over there at a major program, ready to take on the task of attacking the ACC. But What are you looking forward to the most in your own career? What's exciting? What's up next? And uh, what's on deck for Coach Alyssa Andrino? Yeah, you know, um, I'm I'm just excited just to see kind of where I can go with this whole coaching thing. You know, I I don't necessarily have any like super big plans of exactly like where I want to be in five years. I just I want to make sure that I'm making wherever I'm at the best that I possibly can. And, um, you know, I'm super invested in our players here and our, our staff here and just Cal in general and so I'm just super excited to see what we can do this season what we can do in the coming seasons and where we can take Cal and then um, for me personally you know definitely looking forward to maybe some time off maybe getting some more traveling in <laughs> hey it's time to do some more travel what's what's the next country coach what's the next I really country? want to go to Brazil that's my plan Brazil is next all right coach get 30 seconds get the world hype on Cal basketball coach tell, tell them what's gonna crack with this Cal team uh, are y'all gonna get, go get a ring this next year tell what's up what's up on for that for this squad man I hope so you know uh, we're, we're super excited you know they had some super great successes this past season and stuff and so we're looking forward to just continuing to grow off of the success that they had like I said kind of new conference and so it's just new for everyone and so we're really excited just to see how far they can go they've been putting in some work in the gym they've been putting in work in the gym so we've got uh, our first spring match next weekend so we're looking forward to seeing how we play against other people all right do you have any shout outs you want to give yeah, I think my, my biggest shout out would be to my family. Um, my mom, dad, and my little sisters, you know, they are the reason why I'm why, why I'm here today. And, you know, my little sisters are my biggest inspiration. So I love them. Shout out, guys. All right. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. Why don't you do the same thing? With that said, Coach, who are you calling out? Who should have next? Can I call out two? Is that yeah. Right? No, you can call All as right. many as you want. Yeah, first one uh, is going to be uh, Coach Heather Gearhart. She was uh, my previous head coach at Winthrop, and she actually coached me at Tennessee. And so we've known each other for a long time, and I, I love her dearly, and I think she is absolutely incredible. So, Heather, shouting out you. Um, and then another shout out would be to Presley Anderson. Uh, she right now is the current assistant coach at Arizona State. Um, she actually, fun fact, played at Cal, um, and she's actually one of my one of my best friends in the coaching world. And so, um, shouting out Heather Presley. Come on, come on and get right. All right, that sounds like two more wins for me coming up. But Coach Heather and Coach Presley, let the world know that you are up next. You have (laughs) just got your tickets officially punched and you are now on the clock. We will be reaching out to you super, super soon. We can get you guys. I don't know. When when does volleyball season uh, uh, start, Coach? It's in the fall, right? 
Yeah, we don't start training it. Well, we're yep. in our spring training right now, but games don't start till the fall. So you got, okay, you so got, we, got, we got time for Coach got Coach time. Coach Heather and Coach Presley to come on the show. So we're super, super excited about having you guys. We'll be reaching out soon. But Coach Alyssa and Drino, you are the truth. You are down to earth. You are amazing. You are articulate. You funny. You got just an, an excellent vibe. You are genuinely one of one, Coach. We love rocking with you. Can't wait to see where your journey lands. You are extra ordinary and elite you deserve a oh wait hey you know how she was talking about she it never felt like work this don't feel like work man i, lo I love <laughs> doing this i love meeting all these new people and i love telling all of these amazing stories and i hope you enjoyed it and loved it as well thank you for watching another episode of sports life talks you got next we will be back for the next episode well, you can guarantee i'm gonna win the championship rounds and you know what <laughs> i'm gonna I'm go on record and i'm gonna say me and kt we're going to win the next moment of truth just for y'all. But what uh, we need, we're going to win. We're going to win the moment of truth on the next episode. But with that being said, we need y'all to do the big three. That's right. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button and share, share, share this content with as many people as you possibly can. And if you want more Sports Life Talk, we got all kind of cool content that's dropping on our social media platforms as well as our YouTube page at Sports Life Talk, all one word. You can see us on TikTok, IG, X, whatever, whatever's out there. I think Kevin got a Snapchat page that he's hiding somewhere. So y'all lock in with us wherever you see that at Sports Life Talk. And then if you want to be on the show, KT and I can only do so much scouting and recruiting and trying to find talent. We need y'all to come tell us what's popping and go slide in our DMs at sltugotnext.com. sltugotnext.com. Click on the nominate tab and uh, just tell us a few words. Words. Just tell us a little bit. Give us your information. And tell us why you think you got next, and KT will schedule an audition for you so we can uh, we can get you on the show. And last but not least, for all of my podcast junkies out there who like riding and chilling and listening to inspiration and motivation, like myself, take you got next on the road and uh, download the podcast in the audio format, along as well as four hundred and fifty plus other episodes that we've done throughout the uh, throughout the four seasons. So uh, if you're in the car, you're in the kitchen just go down i'm telling y'all you can still take the smooth sounds of the mouth of the south b jones and i'll bump him you can take the velvet tones of me wherever you go and uh we take the laughs on the road all right kt man let's go home bro i'm a sore loser b jones that's just very crazy. much very much my heart hurts i'm hurting I'm, I, I'm, I'm only laughing to stop from crying i'm just telling you right now go ahead and cry so we have no wax coach thank you so much for rocking with us whatever you need from us please let us know and we got your back thank you guys this was awesome Hey, coach, it just seems so empty. Just not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a job for me. Amen. Hey, One <laughs> Night Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe. Be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better. And keep dreaming big, fam, because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet. Still can't believe she ain't choose my shoe. I knew you had next cause you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag cause you're always working like in due time I just, I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk, got the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast is tuning to just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom, you want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next?